Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's try this again, Laverne. Good morning. Good morning. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the winter commencement of the College of Arts and Sciences in 2018. Our speaker this morning is no stranger to the University of Laverne. In fact, she is a two-time alumna, having earned her bachelor's and master's degrees in 1978 and 1982, respectively. Our speaker, Silva Kachigian, is an Armenian of Armenian ethnicity. She came to the United States in 1976 to escape a war that ravaged the country of her home, Beirut, Lebanon. When she arrived as an immigrant, she was admitted to the University of Laverne as a conditional admit. She came here to study English, but changed her major to communications. Two years later, her conditional admit status was a marker of the past as Silva would graduate at the top of her class in 1976. Her search for freedom to continue her education in a foreign land would lead her to meet her husband, Sarkis, at the University of Laverne, and he is also an alumnus. They have two children and two grandchildren. Their son is also a communications graduate and Leo for life. Silva Kachigian serves on the board of directors of the Armenian International Women's Association, and since 2011, she has served as president of the Los Angeles Affiliate, empowering women through education, leadership seminars, and proactively addressing issues of domestic violence, human rights, incarceration, and gender equity. She tirelessly, tirelessly and courageously works to win rights of women, especially in California, where the largest concentration of Armenians resides outside of their homeland, Armenia. These rights include the right to be educated, to own businesses and property, to live free from violence and discrimination, and to earn a fair and equal wage. It also involves understanding laws and policies and the empowering women to invest in their own strengths individually and collectively as they adjust to life in the United States. Under her leadership, Silva was able to generate awareness of human rights as equal rights and gained support. A law for prevention and protection of victims of domestic violence was adopted in Armenia in December of 2017. Silva is a speaker for Armenian Genocide Recognition. When I asked her if she would serve as today's commencement speaker over dinner, she accepted graciously without knowing an invitation would be extended. Her commitment to freedom, democracy, and women's rights are a passion and her mission. Both her passion and mission are timely, especially in today's political climate. I shared with Silva and Sarkis that I believe freedom is the very essence of our economy and society. Without freedom, the human mind is prevented from unleashing its creative force, but what is also clear is that freedom does not stand alone. It is freedom in responsibility and freedom to exercise responsibility. To this end, there cannot be true democracy unless women's voices are heard. There cannot be true democracy unless women are given the opportunity to take the responsibility of their own lives. There cannot be true democracy unless all citizens are able to participate fully in the lives of their country. The work of Silva Kachigian enables women's voices to be heard in efforts leading to freedom and a true democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, arts and science graduates, please help me welcome a true Leo, Silva Kachigian. Thank you, Dean Potter, for that uh, wonderful introduction. I had to pinch myself a couple of times to know that you were really speaking about me. I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, good morning, President Lieberman, and uh, Provost Reed, Trustee Lau, deans, members of the faculty, family and friends, and most importantly, graduates of the winter class of 2018. It is a tremendous honor to be here to speak to you. But I have to admit that it is also a little nerve wracking because I feel like I'm surrounded by a prowl of wild eyed leopards staring at me and I'm wondering if I'm going to be dead meat if I don't deliver. <laughs> so my one relief 
is that you're all gowned and tasseled, and you're all about to become a Leo alumni like me. So breathe that in for a moment, because I'm going to need that moment to breathe. Traditionally, commencement speakers contain life advice, words of wisdom, ideas on uh, how to be successful, to be happy, to be true, to be kind, to be real to yourself, to dream, to follow your passion, and to work hard. Well, that should be easy for me to say because I'm a parent, and that's what parents do. We give advice unconditionally and without cost. It's free. But my daughter, who is a graduate of UC Irvine, and my son, who is a graduate of ULV, immediately stopped me and said, don't, don't do that, Mom. Nobody wants to hear a commencement speaker who is going to give out advice and something that we've heard from our parents for the past 20 to 25 years. Please don't do that, Mom. We all want out of that. And you know what? They're right. Because 40 years ago, I stood behind the podium and gave a valedictorian address at this same Laverne College. And I don't recall who the commencement speaker was or what was said that day. I too wanted out. So what can I tell you, you brilliant beacons of tomorrow? Four words, your roots, your backbone. All life lessons that nurture you into recognizing who you are and what you stand for are a result of the values instilled in you by your roots, your families, the families you are born into, the families you create, and the families you make of your own choosing. We each come from different backgrounds. I'm an Armenian immigrant from Lebanon, but you and I are not very different. Whether your roots are from the Far East, the Near East, the Middle East, Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, across oceans or across the borders, or whether you're born here in the United States and bred here, you are not very different from me because you, like me, have made the choice to be part of this liberal arts community, to receive an education that prepares you to exercise your true freedom, a freedom that allows you to think and live unchained from dogma. And for some of you, and your parents, making that choice to live free came with a sacrificial price. Mine did. It was 1976, and civil war was raging in Lebanon. Young men were being taken to either join one side or the other, and some were kidnapped and brutally murdered. Well, my parents, seeing no end in sight, made the difficult decision to send my younger brother and me to leave the country and study and find our way abroad to get a college education, to be free to practice our rights, our human rights and values. The only exit out of the country was by car. And we made arrangements for a driver who was to take us to the north of the country, across the border into Syria, which is now ravaged by war. And from there, we were to find our way abroad and this was to happen at the first opportunity of a ceasefire. Well, it was dawn, dark, dismal morning, cold in April, when that opportunity arose. There were no long goodbyes. We didn't have time. We kissed, we hugged, and my father said, look forward, go forward, don't look back. Mom and I are looking forward in your direction. We didn't look back. We looked forward, knowing that our parents would be standing in the middle of the street, looking in our direction until they couldn't see us anymore, until we might have turned that last corner, or we were that indiscernible speck in the horizon, because that's what parents do. They fixate their eyes on you and follow the visions of your horizon. Parents, they do sacrifice. 
They build character. They define you and shape you with unspoken, universal values, which become your roots, your backbone. Now, you hold on to those values because they will sustain you when this world feels like it's shifting from under your feet, even with people who you don't think are like you. They are different from you. Because someone, somewhere, somehow, you will have been touching them by your humanity. We're made up of a kaleidoscope of racial groups with over 155 ethnicities. And it doesn't matter whether you practice Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, or are agnostic, we all share a common humanity. And it is in our shared humanity that we can touch lives and strangers can touch ours and give us a sense of hope. That day when we left home, a few hours into the journey, we were caught in the midst of a barrage of gunfire between two sects. A frenzied gunman with an AK-47, what they called Kalashnikov, one of those automatic rifles, immediately told us to move to the side of the building. They were in the middle of this gunfire. We did what he asked. It was do or die. And we were huddled in the car until we seemed like it was an eternity. And then that gunman, that frenzied gunman, returned and asked us to exit the car because he had to ask us a few questions. We were at his mercy. We did what he told, and he pointed that AK-47 at us and asked for our name. Now, if anybody knows anything about Armenian names, they know that it will be easy to identify because they have an I-A-N at the end. Kachikian, Keshishian, Kardashians, they're all Armenians. He waved his gun at us, and he said, are you Armenian? Yes. Do you know Dr. Minasian? As though all Armenians were supposed to know one another. <laughs> it was one of those situations, was it a trick question? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Do we say yes or do we say no? Because Dr. Minasian was our uncle, a pediatrician. Yes, he's our uncle, and he immediately lowered his rifle. And he said, your uncle, he's a good doctor. He saved my boy's life. But, and there's a but, but he's a better man. He took no pay. So now, it's my turn to repay him. I save you. Go. Go. We went, and we didn't look back. War is unimaginably horrific. Yet for a few short moments, in a world of conflict, among strangers, our shared humanity valued goodness and showed reciprocity across cultural divides. Human values, they matter. Six months later, in, after that date, I found my niche in the safety of a liberal arts college called Laverne, while my brother made it safely to Canada. It would be quite a few years before I saw my parents again, but we communicated in what is now called snail mail. We wrote letters. And among the letters I kept is one from my mother. She wrote, Remember who you are and what you stand for. You are rooted in faith. You are rooted in values. Stay connected. Listen to the heart of your knowledge. Always speak the truth. And then in parentheses, she wrote, Now tell me this truth. Are you smoking? Don't, end parentheses. That's my mother. And then she ended her letter with, always remember 
your roots. They are your backbone. Now, with a backbone built on the values of my roots, the first thing I did was to fall in love. It's not what my mother had in mind when she said, follow the voice of your heart's knowledge. Listen, if you haven't fallen head over heels in love at least once, please do so. And when you find that someone you can commit to with passion, you are set. Because once you get a taste of that passion, you'll know how to apply it to everything else that you do in life. Your work, your vocation, your family, your children, your parents, friends, your ideologies. And if it does happen that you get your heart broken, that's okay too. That's the risk you take in love and in life. And you come right back. Well, maybe not quite right back, but you do come back. Stronger, wiser, more passionate to moving forward. There will always be new lessons life has to teach you. If you're willing to listen, be conscious, be aware. Somehow, today in America, we are being led falsely to assume that those who differ from our norms are wrong. That those who come from countries less fortunate are not welcome. Yet it is those people who come from countries, from diverse roots, who have come here as dreamers who mirror the spirit of tolerance, kinship, and nationalism. People like you and me who celebrate the values, traditions, and history of our ancestry while embodying the values of the American way of life. As diverse as we are in race, ethnicity, culture, gender, and sexual orientation, we must trust that our differences will not alienate us. And when all else is pulling you under, remember who you are and what you stand for. Do not lose sight of your heart's knowledge because in a world that seems to reward dishonesty, cutting edges, lying, cheating, stealing, bullying, harassing, and all manners of nasty tactics, graduates of this fine institution that gave you the understanding of how to think Use the values of your roots. Challenge this mindset. Question the status quo. Demand good answers. Be true citizens of humanity. Because citizenship is not found in a piece of paper. It is found in the integrity of character. Think about who you are becoming at every corner or road you take. Now, some of you will choose to seek further studies while others of you may have already mapped your career course. However you choose, and whatever profession you choose to invest in, stay connected to the essence of humanity. It will be the source of your personal worth. Your human connections, your parents, family, spouses, children, educators, heroes of your lives, friends, are the most important investments you will make in life. 20, 30, even 40 years from now, when you beam with pride as you watch your sons and daughters or grandchildren walk across the stage to graduate, you will remember this day. Now, you may not remember me, but you will remember this day. You will remember the people who love you and the human connections on whose shoulders you were raised. Because when all is said and done, you'll find that the true measure of your award was not in the trophies you earned or the merits on paper you collected, but it is in the legacy of your roots that you integrated into the American national identity. Graduates of 2018, you know, with your roots as your backbone, 
Believe in the power of your humanity. Look forward, go forward, don't look back. Congratulations, graduates. Silva, I dare say that you will be the commencement speaker that our students will remember. They might not rem they'll remember the IAN, and they will remember you and the message that you brought forward. Thank you so much. Good morning.